Hello everyone and welcome to my kingdom. Today I'm going to bring you guys along with me. It's maintenance day and we have a lot of cleaning and water changes to do. I personally feel like a lot of the times in social media you see like the end game and the glorified version of the hobby but I feel like you don't really get to see all the work and the maintenance behind it that goes into making the hobby what it looks like on social media. I mean that's kind of the point of social media is to show like everything pretty on there but I do want to show you guys behind the scenes of the work that I put in and the process that it just takes to take care of all these tanks. So right now I have RODI water being made in the bathroom. In all of my fish tanks I use remineralized RODI. It's just easier for me to keep it stable and keep track of parameters that way. If you don't know what this process is, it's basically um, filtering water to become strictly water, nothing else in it. It's just completely zero TDS and then using a powder mix to basically mix the water to exactly what you want. Most of the time you can't just dechlorinate tap water, but in this instance, uh, my tap water is extremely hard. The plants and fish prefer more acidic water. Also putting harder water in your aquascapes does exhaust your aqua soil faster since it has to buffer it. So having softer water will make it last a lot longer. So I'm gonna bring everyone to the fish room, show you how it is now, show you the condition my tanks are in. The ones I set up last week are already starting their algae phase. The water levels are lower, plants need to be watered, and the room needs to be cleaned. So let's get to it. So just fairly quickly, um, this is how my RODI is set up. It's attached to the sink. Um, a lot of people have it attached to the water directly, but I don't have the space or room for that, so I have an adapter on the sink. It runs through my RODI unit and it goes straight into the bin. The reason mine is in the bathtub is because I flood the bathroom a lot. Okay. Here we are in the fish room and I'll show you guys the tanks first and then just show you guys the condition of the room. So here's the salt water jar. Um, I only change this one every month or every month and a half or so. So we're just going to scrub the algae off in there and top off the water to the line. Here is this tank. Probably not going to water change it just because it's still cycling. And there's no big issues going on in there either. So I'll just top that one off with RODI. Again, if you have not worked with RODI, um, benefits of RODI is that you can maintain your water quality in terms of like hardness and what you find in it. So when water evaporates, pure water is leaving your tank. So when you top off with RODI, it is bringing your tank back to the levels that it was without adding extra mineral. Still have this tank empty. And then I had just set this one up, but I'm not sure if you can see there's just lots of algae in there already. So I'm going to do just a quick water change and add ammonia in there again. Nothing with the salt, but I do need to clean off this countertop. The shrimp tanks will both be getting water changes. I was growing some algae on the rocks. And it's been a little while since the caridina got a water change, so we're going to do one on that. And then we're going to check all the plants in the room, make sure they have water, and then we're going to clean the floor. So just before I start everything, I have the tools that I use and a cup of water. So I'm just adding prime to get any like chlorine out of there or heavy metals. And then I'm going to add like a splash of hydrogen peroxide so anything that gets on my tools it's not as like infectious or spread throughout the tanks as it might be. So I do have a clean pitcher that only RODI goes in, or at least one that's cleaned out. Just because if I'm doing water changes, I don't want water being mixed around as much as possible. Didn't need that much, I was just pouring just some pour. Okay, so I got that tank scrubbed. You can see through the glass. I'm just gonna pour my RODI in. Some people do it slowly, but I have super hardy corals. So this one as well, I'm just going to do a top off, which I probably should have had more water for. I'm 
just gonna get a little more. I think we're good there. So I do have two filters on this tank. Um, that's the permanent one. I just have this one running so I can kickstart other cycles. So after I top off, I'm just gonna pump some XL in there. So I use XL in a lot of my tanks. It is not a source of liquid carbon dioxide. So my reasoning why they call it a liquid CO2 is because it's an algicide. It'll kill off algae and give more oxygen that can supply to your plants. However, it's not a substitute for injected CO2. It's nowhere near and I will never do that. So I use it as an algicide. As an algicide, it's a great product, but as a liquid CO2 source, um, no. So before I actually start the water change on the bowl, I'm gonna get my water ready. I poured out one gallon of RODI and for the majority of my tanks, I do remineralize with the salty shrimp. It's gonna be the shrimp mineral and the GH and KH plus. In terms of my Caradina shrimp, I use the B shrimp of salty shrimp and that only raises the GH, which I use a different mixture for them because they do not like that much KH in their water. So when you're remineralizing like this, you do wanna get yourself a TDS meter. What it's gonna do is tell you how much mineral is in your water after you mix it. And for all of my other tanks, I like to stay around 200 to 250. And for my Caradinas, I stay around the 150 range. In this case, this is very useful because you know exactly what is going in your water. If you're gonna do it in other cases, it doesn't necessarily make sense to use a TDS meter because you don't know what kind of minerals you're putting in the water. So if you have a shrimp tank and it's reading 250, unless you mix the water yourself or know the GH, KH, and pH rating, it doesn't really mean anything. So I'm just gonna start off with a small amount. So now I'm mixing everything up. Once everything's dissolved, I'm gonna use the meter to read what is that and then I can adjust from there. I just prefer to have my water mix up beforehand so I don't have to have a tank half empty while it's waiting. So it's easier for me to mix it first. I think after a while, you kind of get a gist of how much powder you should put into your water. It normally like tells you to use like one scoop per this many gallons or liters, but I like to go with the TDS just for a bit of a more accurate reading. So here is my first reading at that 87. So that's generally what I get when I put in the first amount. And then I can just add more and read it in after that. The reason I like to start off with less is because you can always add more to raise the number, but I don't like adding more RDI just because sometimes I fill up my entire gallon and I don't have room to add extra. So it's at 197 now. I want it at least 200, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I like how I just said that you can kind of gauge how much powder to put in after a while and here I am like adding it three more times. It does take a bit to dissolve like completely but the, the stuff that doesn't dissolve right away won't affect your TDS so much so normally they'll advise you to just pour it in with the water. So I got my 253 range and I'm just gonna keep it there. So my water is ready now so all I have to do is scrub the glass in that tank and I'm gonna siphon it out with some airline. If I was just doing a water change without like any cleaning, I would use a bigger hose. But in this case, I could suction out a lot more with the water level dropping a little bit slower. So it's easier to clean if you use airline. But the downside is it also gets clogged sometimes. So let's get to doing that. So since I do have a lot of small tanks, I just use a bigger waste bucket. That way I can collect all my water and it's perfect for my house plants too. I know you guys can't see it, but there's like a small film of algae over the soil. So I'm just going over it to get most of it out.
Where's my Excel? So we're all done with this one and now the last two are just the other two shrimp bowls. The holding tanks I'm just going to top off. All right, so now we're done with all the tanks. All there's left to do is pretty much tidy up and water the plants. I use a moisture meter. It just tells me if the plants are wet or dry. If they're dry or mostly dry, I'll water them. And if they're wet, I leave them alone. So we'll get that done and then we'll pick everything up and vacuum the room. So we're now finished maintaining everything in the room. We got our water changes done, we tidied up, and we watered the plants. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And before you go, if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye everyone.